Hey, so you know what one of the best things about doing this YouTube channel is? Uh, when people in the comments can teach me stuff and I learned something about light maps uh, because of that video yesterday. Um, there was a problem I was having where the texels weren't lining up with what I was doing in Modo uh, once I got it uh, inside of Unreal Engine 4. And the reason is actually pretty simple, but it's something that's you know, completely not obvious until you dig into the right areas. So I'm going to explain what's going on right now. So finding this information, uh, first of all, we have to give a huge thanks to Jay Attic, who was the one who brought this up to me. Uh, what's happening uh, is light mass, uh, when you bring your mesh in, sorry, uh, when you recompute your lighting, uh, light mass is adding a one pixel border around your light map. You're in an attempt, I think, to automatically handle bleeding issues that go off the sides of the map. But unfortunately, what's uh, the side effect of that is that if you precisely align your UVs to um, spots on your light map template, you're no longer mapping, say, an 8x8 texture to your 0 to 1 space. You're mapping a 10x10 10 10 texture. So everything gets a little bit skewed and off. And uh, that's why things weren't importing and matching up the way I was hoping they would. So uh, we need to account for that. And actually, how you account for it is is really pretty simple. Um, let's take a look at it uh, inside of UE4. So here inside of UE4, this is the uh, same cube. Uh, I brought it in, and I brought in the 32 by 32 light map template to use as a diffuse texture, just you know to see the general mapping. Now, uh, inside the uh, static mesh properties. Um, I have the diffuse texture and the and the light map sharing the same UV channel just for for ease of te you know for ease of testing. So you can see you know, I have the same UVs, and I've set my light map resolution to 32 to match the template texture. So I'm going to build lighting on this, and we'll take a look at what this looks like when it gets done. But you know, spoiler alert: what you're going to see you know, is that same weird. Uh, offsetting that I had yesterday because it comes in and it's not quite lined up and it's puzzling. Well, it's because of that one pixel reservoir that we talked about, right? So uh, the way that I figured out to fix this really easily is you just take your light map resolution you want to use and add two to it to account for the reservoir, right? So we'll change our 32 to a 34. So if I do that, and by the way, uh, when you see meshes looking like this, uh, that means your lighting is unbuilt. Um, just a handy little hint. So, so we bumped it up by two pixels to account for that reservoir. Now you'll see when lighting gets rebuilt, uh, we get a ticket to the promised land. And there we have it, <laughs> right? Uh, it's all aligned perfectly just the way I set it up inside of my modeling application. So, so, so again, a huge thanks to Jay Attic who pointed me in the right direction for this and now I'm dying to go make a bunch of modular assets because I know I can light map them precisely and exactly the way I want them to be. So go forth and light map. So it was brought to my attention that I didn't touch on, on resolution uh, issues. And it is something that's important and you do have to keep it in mind when you're using uh, light maps because light maps are inherently low res things and uh, squeezing the most out of them is, is part of your job as a 3D artist. So let's take this mesh right here. This mesh, you know, let's pretend it's a uh, fridge or a computer terminal or something like that, right? Uh, the player will be able to see the front of it here and they'll see the top, you know, from the second floor or if they jump or whatever. So those two spots are, are kind of important. The back uh, will always be up against the wall and the bottom is going to be hard to see uh, unless the you know, mesh is uh, knocked over or something, right? So the back and the bottom uh, UV shells are not that important. So over here you can see, but you know, with a basic unwrap and pack, you can see over here in the UV map, they're of equal importance to the other things. So what you can do is say, take those and scale them down to 50% or so, you know, just for testing purposes, and then repack the mesh. So now they're smaller and using less of the light map. And the other areas got larger, which means they're using more of the light map. So you're giving 
more resolution to the important areas the player can see, right? And that sounds obvious, but it's something that you do miss when you start out. You think everything should be even, uh, evenly distributed, and it shouldn't be. You, know, you should distribute it uh, where it's needed the most. And if uh, your game is set up in such a way that you will never see the front and the back, or I'm uh, sorry, the bottom and the back, you, know, you can easily take that shell and overlap it on the bottom, uh, then grab them both and scale them way down and jam them over in a corner someplace like up here because uh, you do have to have the UVs around, but you don't have to have them um, you know, taking up space anywhere. Now, now in this particular mesh, it's not causing any more resolution to come to these, but uh, you can see how that would be handy on a larger prop, right? You could take all the stuff the player will absolutely never see and just scale them down real small and overlap them and stick them up in the top corner of the light map because who cares if they're pitch black. So anyway, uh, that's a quick little tip to round out this video and I'll see you next time.